my name is Elon Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And you know, I wasn't planning on doing this video today. I have a video uploaded and ready to go, but no, I am shunting it along to uh, later in the week. It's, gonna, it's a Doctor Who Media Sphere one. I finally worked out how to brand Doctor Who Media Sphere. Those are, that's a strand of videos I do. I have like several strands, but Doctor Who Me Media Sphere, it's, uh, uh, it's just like, oh, this is all the weird stuff from the, from the internet, all the weird Doctor Who stuff from the internet. And boy, did that video have some weird ones in bleedingcool.com. It, it, they obviously have had their asses handed them over and over again by you know, any argument they have, and also just by looking at the work world around them. Yeah, and they needed a, to feel good about themselves, so they made up this uh, uh, supposedly alt right person and what they would say. Of course, no alt right person. Like, firstly, there isn't really an alt right, but uh, uh, you know, whatever. We'll move on with that. And what they they would nobody I know would say anything like that. And they were definitely talking about me. I mean, that my sort of person. Uh, and it was just. It was sad. It was pathetic and ridiculous. But then, then, then it got a bit better when I found another article where I put the same video. Because this is the weird stuff from the internet. Uh, uh, how Doctor Who and Futurama share a uh, have, should have a shared universe. And it won me over, right? So that's what was going to happen today, right? That was the plan. And then we had a whole bunch of news. I At first I thought, well, this is no real news, right? Uh, uh, just little bits of news. Uh, uh, but then you put it all together. Oh, no, it's quite a bit of news. I woke up this morning, quite, quite, a bit, quite a bit of stuff we need to talk about. And the thing with news videos is you need to get them out urgently because otherwise they stop being news. They start becoming chip wrappers, right? If you're from America, that means you were uh, yesterday's news. We had a tradition here in England of... Uh, of fish and chips. By the way, I'm going to solve a riddle for you right now. English people and Americans, you may be confused that my wife actually solved, solved this riddle, right? Uh, um, that uh, uh, Americans believe English food is inedibly bland, right? And English people believe, no, I've eaten English food. It's not in it. What are they talking about? I don't understand. Here, here, here's the difference. I was just going to say fish and chips. We're talking about chip wrappers. You used to uh, uh, get your chips wrapped up in newspaper, and now they just print newspapers specially for it. But anyway, that's beside the point. Beside the point. It's a it's a cultural difference because it, culturally in England, you're supposed to add condiments to your food. That's how it's designed. Fish and chips, very bland without condiments added. Add a bit of salt and vinegar. Num, num, num. I like a bit of salt and vinegar. Yeah, num, num, num. Goes down well with your pickled onion. I, I think that uh, uh, can be, be, be a good evening. However, American food is designed not to add condiments to, right? A burger. A burger comes already ready to go. Yeah, you might want to dip your french fries in the ketchup, but that's about it, right? So, you know, Americans come to England and say, ah, let me try some of your good old fish and chips. And like, Ew. They, don't, they don't have salt and vinegar. So yeah, that's why they believe it to be bland, bland uh, 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 because they don't know how to eat it. Okay, essentially, so, uh, yeah, I solved the, uh, 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 was it a riddle of the silence for you. In the first five minutes of this video, you're welcome, darling. You're welcome. Anyway, uh, uh, um, we got a whole bunch of news to, to go over to, uh, to, uh, this morning. So uh, like, share, subscribe. All those things are very good. Thank you very much. Here's the news, by the way, that uh, I'm I'm not really focusing on now, but I just got a reliable rumor, right? A reliable rumor. And it's a rumor. Rumor, rumor, rumor that uh, Season 9, John Pertwee's Season 9, is about to be released on Blu-ray. I, mean, I should really pull that up. One second. Let me just uh, open up an episode, guys. So uh, maybe we'll, 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 we'll go over... Uh, um, the stories on the uh, you know, in, in that season because I I'm psyched right I I love Doctor Who the collection so that that's really genuinely a hot off the press room right it really is a hot off the press room but in fact you know what by G agree I think we're even going to start with that fine like share subscribe comment all those things are very very good I thank you very much I am grateful for you doing all those things uh, um, in the video notes there's a link to my uh, Substack with my email newsletter I try and put extras into it all the time I try and like extra stuff that. Uh, I have a digital back backload of all uh, Doctor Who magazines. I pull out different articles, things I find interesting, things I'll go, hmm, if I got in an email, right? So that's in there. It's free. Also, there's links to my Instagram, my Twitter. Please follow me on all those things. Uh, uh, like, share, subscribe. Yeah, I think we covered everything, right? I think we covered everything. Please comment and definitely hit the subscribe button. I do like my li little Adobe hit. Fine, let's talk about season nine for a second. Again, rumor. This is a rumor. So this is season seven. I can't wait for season seven to be released, right? But season eight has been released. They're terror of the autumns. 
they did new CGI on it. And, and have to tell you, I wasn't impressed with the, the how they realized the nesting, which is kind of like a giant squid that was uh, at the end they put on top of the radio telescope. It was just kind of like laying on top. I, if you saw the the autumn videos from the nineties, the BBV ones, right? They were really cool. You had like this big nesting kind of like octopus crab thing crouching over a church to see that's what i expected right so that wasn't very good mind of evil one of my favorite stories of all time love that story claws of access also love that story uh colony in space and the demon yes yeah this, this is just a great box set but season nine right season nine is gonna have oh oh good one so uh dare the daleks now they did a special edition of that which is Freaking awesome, right? They 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 went down to that same house where they had the uh, um, where they filmed the Styles' uh, uh, peace conference, uh, uh, and they added in a bunch more Ogrons and Daleks, right? And it sounded much better. They uh, sounded much more contentious though. Nick Briggs redid the Dalek voices, so they they're now like modern Daleks, uh, and a lot of people were not happy with that. I, I, for me, it was fine. Um, but, and the yeah, new special event, I really really love the new version of Dare the Daleks. It is my default one to watch. It's fantastic. It really is absolutely fantastic. Uh, then you're going to have Curse of Peladon, uh, the first of the Peladon stories. Uh, is that the one with the Venusian lullaby? That one. Uh, sea Devils uh, ending up with the master ri uh, riding off on a, on, on a hoverboat. Uh, um, uh, it's called a hop yeah uh, 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 cackling to himself uh, uh, yeah okay see that was quite I, I, that's not the best one the mut mutants actually is a good good little story right I, I haven't seen it for a while but mutants is, I like that's the one where they have the bad guys are South Africans it makes it feel it gives it a little kind of different feel to it and the season ends off with Delgado's last story the time monster that's going to get the new special effects treatment I think right my, my guess it, actually, do I, hey, one second let me have a look I have this excellent book here Let's see if they have uh, the Time Monster. Let's see if they have new special effects on it already. So I was looking at season 20, which was apparently is between 9 and 20, which were, which was going to be uh, released next. And uh, uh, apparently, the I got the word this morning, it's season 9, right? It's season 9. Time Monster, Time Loner, Time Meddler, Time Monster, what they have it. Uh, making of Restoration Comparison... Uh, oh yeah, they did. They, they do a lot. I find that stuff very interesting, right? And audio comments. Not much on that one, right? Not much on that. This. I think they're gonna. Uh, um, I think that's the one gonna get the new special effects. Who's gonna be interviewed from that? I mean, who's left? Uh, uh, they, have they done a Katie Manning interview yet? I think they probably. Uh, it's, it's like. I think it's basically is Katie Manning the last person? I mean, yeah. Maybe you get Ian Levine in. I don't know. I mean, those interviews with Matthew Sweet are fantastic, but like. You know, Mike Gates and Sergeant Benton. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't see me wanting a too in-depth one. I'm pretty sure they've done a Katie Manning interview, haven't they? I would have thought. I mean, it's so sad they didn't get Caroline John and so many people have passed away over, over the year. Well, yeah, it happens, right? Anyway, anyway, I, I, I find that quite quite an exciting bit, bit of breaking news. But the big bit, bit of breaking news yesterday was not the location filming, right? We'll look at that quickly, the first location filming. Uh, uh, Doctor Who filming with... I wish I could know, know how to pronounce his name. Problem Big knows how to pronounce his name. I've got to ask him. Uh, and Nurin Bernard. Bernard. And Nurin Bernard at Cardiff Bay. Doctor Who filming with and Nurin Bernard at Cardiff based uh, City Stadium. So, yeah, uh, uh, also... Um, uh, Millie Gibson as well. Uh, well. There was a blonde woman, blonde girl in a brown jacket. People said, I think that's Millie Gibson. They were in the center of the pitch. You could hear people say, get off the pitch! And they were like, obviously acting. <laughs> and there's lots of signage all around the pitch for uh, uh, Albion, the, this weird political party. They seem to be the bad guys. Uh, and uh, it said, what's it? We'll, we'll, we'll whiz through this. Uh, well, firstly, the guy who, who tracks the location filming, he managed to get, get get a picture with whoever his name is, and Nurin Bernard. Listen, mate, listen, uh, uh, how about John Smith? Wouldn't that be easier? All right, um, then the same woman walked out before, uh, who they seen before. Uh, uh, do they, they had uh, uh, what the signage was saying. Not here, though. It's like, uh, uh, get off the pitch. Are you listening? Get off the pitch. And it says, uh, uh, bigger, better, bolder Britain or something like that. 
uh, uh, in the sign. So it's very nationalistic. So somebody had the theory that this is going to tie into like uh, Arthur, uh, uh, Arthurian, 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 King Arthur law. Um, maybe, maybe Battlefield. That would be quite quite good. I, I I would be up for that, right? I would totally be up for that. Fine. So that was the news yesterday. Yeah. Look, the the the, the thing that's made me crazy about all this uh, location filming is uh, uh, the security is just too bloody good. We don't, we're not getting anything, right? Like, absolutely. I haven't even seen Shooty yet. I mean, like, oh, man. I want to see Shooty filming. I want to see him run down a corridor, right? That's what I want to see. Shooty run down a corridor. I think that's going to be awfully good. Fine. Fine. So that was the secondary news of the day. The big news of the day was this. Uh, new official Doctor Who art heralds Shooty Gatwa and the coming Hooniverse. Yeah, they, this is actually quite, new, quite good news. I find it interesting they went with this artwork from, which is clearly he's not even in costume yet. Now, you haven't seen much of Shooty uh, um, in, in the film. Has he been finishing off stuff for sex education, you think? And he hasn't really started filming yet? I don't know. But he's at Bad Wolf Studio now. But let's, let, let's see what's going down, right? What's going down there? Uh, Doctor Who Production House Bad Wolf Studios share an image of a new mural bearing Shooty Gutwa as the Doctor and teasing the coming Hooniverse. Yes, listen, I think once they paint your name on, uh, once they paint your face on the wall, you, you were in for a while. <laughs> when I was in rabbinical ceremony, right, I uh, uh, we used to, uh, on, on, uh, you have the thing called Sabbath, right, where you don't uh, use electricity for, you know, directly for 25 hours, then you have big meals. So when you're in rabbinic ceremony, you go to different different family. You, they have meals in, in the in the yeshiva, it's called, in the, <laughs> in the, the, the uh, ceremony. Uh, but you also would go, sometimes they wouldn't, and you'll go out to local families for meals, right? So we went to one person, and, and uh, uh, um, it's... Uh, no, oh, this must. We went there before Sabbath because we used the, the elevator to get to the house, and they didn't have numbers on the elevator. They just had the people's names on plaques on the. I'm like, well, I guess you can't move out, right? Now, now your name's on a plaque on the elevator. That's it. You're stuck, right? This is where you live now. Okay, you don't. You're not going anywhere else. Um, Doctor Who production house Bad Wolf Studios have released an image of the 15th Doctor Shooty Gatwa in front of a new mural. T now, how long has this mural been here? Is the question. New mural, um, uh, new mural, uh, the new mural teasing the coming Hooniverse. Uh, uh, starting with a three episode six anniversary later. Yeah, really, Rossi Davis is making a return of Sharon. Really, really, I, I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard that. You know, it's, it's always like when you have a. Uh, um, you know, a well-meaning mean, relative said, Hey, did you know Doctor Who's on at Christmas? Yeah. You like that, don't you? You like that? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, we know. We know. Uh, 2023, uh, a 23 Christmas special. We'll see Shooty Gatwa step into the TARDIS after David Tennant's brief return to the role following season, uh, followed by season 14, which will be eight episodes long, along with a Christmas special of its own. Filming uh, season 14 is currently underway to air in 2024 man that is a really 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 boring uh, uh, sentence right gawa was snapped by bad wall studios looking ecstatic he looks ecstatic a lot of the time and quite frankly wouldn't you right uh uh, uh yeah look <laughs> he does look ecstatic um uh in front of the newly unveiled oh so it's newly unveiled mural so i don't know how long it's been up there uh, it features him as a doctor with the tagline "The Home of the Hooniverse." Now that's exciting. We want to. We now know what's what else is in the Hooniverse, right? Doctor Who hat fans are hugely excited by a tagline which implies spin-offs may well be in the world. Okay, obviously, I mean, how many times do they need to tell you, right? I mean, how many times? It's going to take some time to ramp up. I think Ralph D. Davis wants to make sure. Each new show is completely solid before it's announced, right? Here's a question, though. Do you think they'll all have the same tone as Doctor Who, or do you think they'll have differing tones? My guess is differing tones. And I'll tell you why. It's because uh, um, the uh, uh, the w when he did it before, that's essentially what he did. He covered all of the uh, viewing public. He had Doctor Who, which was a family show. And then he had Sarah Jane Adventures, which was a kid's show. And it was a kid's show. I, I, I You know, I found it hard watching. I didn't watch all of them. 
you know, the, 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 the big fanfare music whenever Mr. Smith appeared just seems a bit kiddie and silly to me. Well, it's not aimed at me. It was a kid's show, but oh, I didn't mind it. And then you had Torchwood, which was a very grown-up show. For grown-up, they meant uh, uh, everybody has some kind of same-sex uh, encounter in the first couple of episodes. I mean, really, really, even Owen, everybody, like everybody, oh, even Gwen, everybody, everybody, uh, uh, you know, likes to have a same-sex encounter. Uh, okay, uh, uh, but, you know, you maybe could have, like, uh, ratted back on that a bit. Um, season two of Torchwood, I found far superior to season one. And that was a Chris Chibnall season, which I find bizarre, right? Absolutely bizarre how he was a showrunner there and did a good job, uh, uh, in my opinion, and, you know, absolutely <laughs> failed as Doctor Who, right? So I think we're going to see shows of varying different tone. Uh, I'm also thinking it's going to be... Um, the one that we heard about, which was an anthology series based around monsters, I reckon that's going to be a more adulty show. Or it could be more kid, but I think it's going to, it sounds like a more adulty, prestige Game of Thronesy type show, right? Uh, that would be my guess. And, and honestly, just look at all the failures uh, Disney has ha has had with their with their brands. Uh, Star Wars has been is just like culturally irrelevant. Nobody cares. Nobody came to watch that and or uh, no, nobody came to watch uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, and then literally nobody came to watch Andor, right? Which wasn't bad. It just way too long. Uh, uh, they just killed it. Every Marvel Phase Four thing has just crashed and burned. The only exception, which isn't really a Phase Four thing, is Spider Man No Way Home. Right? Everything else has been in an embarrassing failure and they know it's been an embarrassing failure right so they really need doctor who to work really i think they really genuinely do at this point uh doctor who fans are hugely excited by the tagline which implies spin-offs may be in the work davis has previously spoken of his desire to expand the who universe in a marvel style continuity and there's been much speculation that davis will oversee a number of other shows parallels to doctor who although nothing has been officially confirmed this tagline is the closest thing all just have the confirmation well uh um, the the tagline Hooniverse that was registered by uh, Bad Wolf about a year ago that that was broken on the the Facebook channel by uh, Dad, Dad Dad Hadler's channel, so uh, we kind of known about it for a while really. Well, I do like this tagline, as I said. Uh, everything we know about the new era of Doctor Who. Okay, I, I can't. I don't think you know much about much. So can we get a better picture of it though? I like. Like, that's the freaking point of this article. I guess if I click here, it'll take me to it. Doink. There we go. Oh, you still can't see it says Hooniverse, but I do like the way the word who is slightly different, is a thicker, double-barreled front, uh, uh, and, you know, Newverse isn't, right? Uh, okay, there you go. But we could have seen a little bit more, but, you know, Sh Shooty looks pretty darn happy there. Let's see, Let's see his smiling little face, you know? Uh, um, I, I, I'm really excited for this Doctor Who, right? I'm really genuinely excited to see see, see what he's going to do with it. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Well, right, yeah. Though the next episodes are slated to air in November, much information regarding the new era of Doctor Who has already been shared. Well, mainly on this channel, mate. Uh, and much of the uh, and much more has been rumored, right? We like the rumors. Another rumor, right? Another rumor that uh, um, we uh, the Smugglers is due for release at some point this year, and the rumor was it was going to be animated, right? The return of the animations. But uh, uh, another rumor going round is not broken by my channel, so I feel you know, somewhat at liberty to talk about it. That the um, the the smugglers uh, is actually going to be is actually been a f has been found right and uh, located, I should say, uh, uh, and it's going to be released. And, and, and along with that, there's a lot of other rumors going around about missing stories as well. There's uh, you know uh, uh, I think over the next few years we as people essentially as as private collectors die. That uh, they are, it's expected that a lot more of these missing stories are going to be returned to the BBC. Like a lot of the stuff they've already done the animations of are going to be returned to the BBC. Uh, uh, that'd be fantastic, right? Absolutely fantastic. And we got. I, well, I'd love to see compare the animation to the original, right? I, I think I think that would be 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 really fascinating. Um, to see, fine, there is going to be many actors returning, including Tennant. Uh, favorites Tennant and Tate uh, are already confirmed to return to, uh, for the 
three six year anniversary specials and newcomer Neil Patrick Harris oh yeah newcomer he's Doogie Howser baby he's been around for ready is heavily suspected by the classic villain celestial toy maker I'll be surprised if he's not right that's not a really rusty Davis you know mic droppy thing to do he would like to say oh celestial toy maker yeah I mean it's I, I would be surprised if, if that's not the case whose only television story aired in 1966. Viewers have theorized that this hugely powerful villain has meddled with the Doctor's regeneration, causing him to revert uh, to a previous incarnation. I don't think he has reverted to a previous incarnation. I think he, I think he was able to um, imprint a, 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 a reality upon him, right? Uh, uh, that's what it looked like. I mean, I think that's how they're going to explain the clothes changing as well. Uh, which means, right... Uh, um, I was going to say when when, when shooting come, comes around and they they all uh, uh, you know all this is taken care of, uh, is he going to be in Joda's costume? No, you know why we know he's not going to be in Joda's costume because uh, 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 because like look at the he's, we've seen him with in the in the tenant costume with his tie undone. Tell me, tell me, wait, what the hell is going on here? Uh, um, I, yeah, I can't wait till somebody tells me what what the hell is going on here, mate. Quite frankly. Uh, views the theory as a powerful villain, blah blah blah. Uh, causing them to uh, other classic monsters, including Beat the Meat, not really classic monster, that's from a, a, co a comic strip. Uh, and the and the, the race from the 1970s time comics, uh, have been spotted uh, in the trailer and on set, uh, yeah, and in the location filming. The anniversary looks like a celebration of all eras of Doctor Who, and with David hinting the long awaited return of the Doctor's granddaughter, uh, uh this uh, is certainly still much. That has he's kept under wraps. Yeah, I, th I reckon we're going to have an awesome, awesome anniversary. I think it's going to be really freaking fantastic. I I, I kind of like the idea of doing a watch along, but I really want to want to watch it and like absorb it. Uh, uh, um, yeah, it all depends when it comes out, I guess. Um, I think November 23rd, but it's probably going to be airing over, over, over a week, I would have thought. Though not much is known beyond the 6th anniversary special, Gut was first four episodes are compared. It's confirmed to be the 2023 Christmas special. Uh, in, uh, interesting to note the return on Christmas specials, which were staples in the first uh, Davis and Moffat eras, but teach to favor New Year's specials uh, in the in the Chibnall era. Yeah, look, Chibnall wasn't your, your, your sharpest tack in the box, mate, okay? He wasn't like, you know, Cap Captain Clever. Uh, uh, in fact, every decision he made is about, you know, there's a uh, uh, other bit of news. Chris Chibnall is appearing at his first convention next month at Gallifrey One, uh, fearing to appear at any convention up until this point for, uh, he thought if I, uh, if, if, he, if he goes in front of a, uh, uh, you know, a random selection of Doctor Who fans, he stands a good chance of being torn limb, for, limb from limb for his crimes against you know, humanity and, and Gallifrey and kind as well. Uh, uh, yes, he stands he stands a genuine chance of, oh, of, you know, of that going down. So he hasn't gone to one, uh, but he's going. Uh, the first one he's going to is Gallifrey, which is in LA. Which uh, 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 I have joked before. You're going to have to need to climb over large mounds of human feces to get to the uh, hotel. Why? Because LA is run much the same way as uh, 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 Chris Chibnall ran Doctor Who. Oh yes, it is, baby. Oh yes, it is. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, da, 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 uh, Chris Chibnall. The following, uh, the following season fourteen star. Uh, the following season fourteen will star Corey Conway Street actor Millie Gibson. Uh, uh, who? Uh, man, I've been doing some. Uh, some, some, some this sounds pervy. I've been doing some research on her. Who? Uh, she cried. No, no, no. I mean, genuinely, I think she's going to be very, very good. Right? I, 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 I think she's uh, uh, a strong actor. Right? Um, Go and check out her her, her clips on um, uh, on YouTube. Also, Rusty Davis mentioned this in Doctor Who magazine that she got more and more plot lines in Cory. Why? Because the writers like writing for her because she could really bring it. I am so excited to see what she's going to do with this job. Right? I really am. I'm really. I'm. I am. I'm got. I know nothing about her other than she seems very very gracious, uh, and which I was very impressed with. Very like genuinely. Uh, 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 humble, right? And, and and I just hope she she has a great career, right? I really and she's got every building block to be huge, right? Absolutely huge. Uh, uh, but many, many, just just stay you. That what, what you know? Stay grounded. Hollywood is a bad place, a bad place where they do bad things to to you know unsuspecting actors. Don't go there. It is bad. Um, 
Fine, Corey, uh, Doctor Who's companion, Ruby Sunday, and Gemma Redgrave's that blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we know all this. Uh, though little is known of plot of the upcoming season 14, the BBS entered into an into Disney Plus. Cut. This is the most boring article of all fun. It's fine, it's over. You right? that, that is genuinely, genuinely a snoozer of an article. I just really wanted to talk about the uh, 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 the Hooniverse reveal. Uh, this I find a much more interesting article. Bit of Neil Gaiman. I like Neil Gaiman. Now, Neil Gaiman... Uh, uh, um, you know, poor, woke, cucked, uh, uh, um, loser. <laughs> Sadly, still massively talented, and it's very, very sad, right? That, that he's a, 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 such a cucked loser. I mean, like, look, look, yeah, Neil, everything you need to know about Neil, Neil Gaiman, you can see from the Sandman adaptation, where, uh, 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 they picked this uh, talented uh, black actress to play Death, who is a, is a character who is defined by their whiteness, who is super white and is a part of a family, the Endless, who is all super white. That is their physical definition of them. And, and Neil Gaiman pretends that he can't see any difference between the black actress and the very white character, the very white goth character. He's like, oh, they look the same to me. Yeah, no, you're lying, mate. You are lying. And it's okay you're lying, but you're mainly lying to yourself, right? You're mainly lying to yourself because you are very, very much uh, um, invested into, you know, this, this wokeness, right? And wokeness is, uh, uh, an, uh, I would say, adoption of values that... Uh, uh, are some are not universally uh, 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 are, are not universally I'm talking about values that that seem to be modern and progressive but are actually designed to make your life absolutely miserable right that that's what wokeness is not in turn that's not as, as a on a personal level, right? I, I think being woke in terms of uh, entertainment is you use that entertainment to propagandize the that ideology, right? So I love it. They say, oh, well, there's no, there's no definition of being woke. That being said, right, Neil Gaiman is a, is a fantastic writer and a very good thinker, right? And sadly, okay, his whole problem was he had an open marriage, uh, which he thought sounded fun because that meant he could stop other, other, you know, other ladies. But no guy wants to see his wife stop other men, right? No person is okay with it. And the more they say they, they are, the less they are, and the more bonkers it makes you. Neil Gaiman, ladies and gentlemen, okay? That's exactly what went down with him. Poor guy. Gaiman picked out the final part of the, se uh, the season six hero, the War Games, as a formative moment. Neil Gaiman reveals which story made him fall in love with Doctor Who. So, I, I, again, this fascinates me, right? I, I mean, yeah, this absolutely does fascinate me. So let's see what made you fall in love with Doctor Who. Because, yeah, his Doctor Who is good, right? The, the Doctor's wife is good. I also heard uh, that the... Um, that Cyberman one was, was it had potential to be good. It was kind of let down a little bit, but generally speaking, it was good. Neil Gaiman has made a long career uh, has had that has made a has long made it clear he's a huge fan of Doctor Who, uh, and now Good Omens and the Sandman writer revealed which episode made him fall in love with the series in the first place. I can't. I wouldn't be able to tell you what episode made me fall in love with the series in the first place. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think one of my favorite moments is uh, Tom Baker holding the two strands. In Genesis of the Dalek saying, do I have the right? Right? Um, that I found just crazily brilliant. Absolutely crazily brilliant. Right? I really genuinely did. Um, fine, where are we up to? As revealed, uh, the episode made a fall in love with Doctor in the first place. Gail Gaiman, who penned the Who episodes Doctor's Wife and Nightmare and Silver in 2011 and 13, respectively, explained on Twitter that the final part of season six, The War Games, had captivated him as a child before my time. But let's see what he has to say. I unpilled my mind uh, and it left me with love of the infinite possibilities uh, inherent in the story. Uh, he wrote, 21st of June, 1969, I was eight. That's fascinating, right? That's absolutely fascinating. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, you know what did that for me? It wasn't Doctor Who, right? It was The Adventure of the Luther Arkwright by Brian Tolbert. That was the first time I realized what a comic book could do. And it, I, I, it fascinated me ever since. It excited me ever since, right? Um... I, I love the adventure of Luther Arkwright. Uh, uh, I was about the same age. Yeah, I was about the same age. Uh, I, was, I went to a signing for at Forbidden... This was back when there was Forbidden Planet 1 and Forbidden Planet 2 on uh, St. Giles Street and Denmark Street, right? If you, if you know what I'm talking about, oh, then were the days, right? So uh, uh, the signing was in Forbidden Planet 2. You had to line up around this, like, 
Anyway, so Brian Tolbert was there, who wrote, who did the artwork on Nemesis, and uh, he also had a stack of Luther Arkwrights there, which all the pages fell out of uh, pretty darn quickly because it wasn't it wasn't well printed. So he got me to buy it. Basically, he sold it to me. Freaking loved it. Absolutely freaking loved it. It blew my mind, right? Absolutely blew my mind. Uh, um, but anyway, let's get back to Neil Gaiman. <laughs> The comments were made in a thread uh, responding to a meme that encouraged children to head outdoors because kids won't remember the uh, best uh, best day of television. Well, that's not true. But but there is no good television. So yeah, what they're going to get really? What they're going to remember? The mass bloody singer. Poor 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 people. Uh, and other people trying to uh, uh, other people replying to the initial post mentioned episodes of Thundercats. Jim Henson, the storyteller. Oh, the storyteller. Freaking awesome. The first season with Jonathan Hurt. Oh, my God. Second season, Michael Gamble. And He-Man being extremely formative moments uh, when they were younger. The War Games consists of 10 parts uh, uh, and the final uh, uh, and was the final series of the show's six runs. It was supposed to be the season finale finale, the series finale, right? And it is such a good freaking story. It is Terrence Dick showing you how to write. It really is. Uh, uh, it, it's 10 episodes long and doesn't drag at all. It rattles from place to place to place. Love it. It's a summation, I would say, of the uh, Patrick Trout and Doctor Who. Uh, uh, really, yeah. So it's last regular appearance of Fraser Hines and uh, uh, Patrick and Fraser Hines uh, and uh, uh, Wendy Pabry, uh, Zuri Harriet. It's set on an unnamed uh, race led by the Warlord, who is you know, intimated to be a Time Lord. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 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 the series comment in the Doctor's Trial, the first time other members of the race had appeared in the show. Yeah, it was It was a very bold move, right? It was a very bold move. Uh, um, yeah, listen, I think the, the, the expanding possibility of that, I can imagine having a, a bizarre effect on the young Neil Gaiman's mind. Uh, uh, I do not know... What happened to the young Bleeding Call's mind? But they're a, they're a weird group of people, Bleeding Call. Uh, as, I, yeah, as I said, the video today, what it was supposed to be today, that what was going to be them uh, making, just making up somebody they think is like me so he, they can make an argument that they can easily beat because they can't beat any of my arguments, right? So it's good to say it was sad and pathetic, right? Genuinely sad and pathetic. Uh, Doctor Who to Disney Marvel Studios. We can do superhero moments too. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, maybe it has to do with the show's deal with Disney, but BBC's Doctor Who is out to prove someone uh, uh, some uh, to prove to someone it can do superhero things too. I think it's more the taking a uh, um, a touchstone from what's in the cultural zygest, which is you know essentially super, uh, it. it, 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 it Descended from superhero movies, right? Let's face it. Doctor Who is a superhero and superhero. No, not really. I'm sorry, darling. Jody didn't do very well, right? Jody really, really genuine. Could have done. Could have done. But didn't, right? So, uh, no, she's not a heroine as a superheroine. I'm sorry. And, and even if you want to say that Jodie Whittaker acting was canonically the Doctor, then she is the uh, uh, mentally challenged Doctor, right? The developmentally challenged Doctor who can't tell up and down a black and white. She screwed up all the time. I'm sorry. So, yeah, I understand. Oh, oh, yeah, we're breaking the glass. Here's what's really going on, okay? Yeah, it's, it's easier to tell with the Black Little, uh, black little Mermaid. Now, who is the Black Little Mermaid for? Not for black people, right? No, no, no. Black people are not that interested in... I mean, I'm saying it as a monolith. But no, generally speaking, not that interested to uh, uh, somewhat offended by it. But no, it's for the white people because they, they believe that black people are going, Oh, master, you're so good to us black people. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're so good to us giving us your own uh, castles. Oh, now we've got our own little mermaid. And they and, they, and this is what goes on in their head, right? This is the conversation that goes on in their head. They, they go, yes. You're right. I am so good. I'm so virtuous. Oh, I'm so good because I like a black little mermaid. Oh, so that's why they all loved uh, uh, wokeness. It's, you know, in, in, generally speaking, the uh, um, fundamentally changing these beloved characters into something that they're not, so they can take on uh, a, a different surface identity. Right. So, so. 
loser idiots like this that actually have no moral value whatsoever can feel good about themselves. That's the entirety of it. It's pure narcissism. It's got nothing to do with being kind. It's got nothing to do about being anti-fascist or anti-racist. It's actually both fascist and racist. So, But it, the, tr the trouble with the, the day is this, right? Normally, you know, when things go weird, the news says, oh, that's bad. You shouldn't like that. But nowadays, the news doesn't do that anymore, right? They, so people... When people are not told what's good and what's bad, they're just confused and they think everything's okay. Uh, even as the world degenerates around them, like, oh, and you said it was okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, he didn't used to be. The original show, he was an adventurer stumbling from one situation to the next, a vehicle uh, or a format ge uh, generating stories uh, in the old pulp tradition. Well, that's not true, okay? Um... I just been, I've been watching the season two box set, which is where you can really see the moment where Verity Lambert leaves. Right, you've got Dalek Invasion of the Earth, and it's the second Dalek story, and it's 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 a sequel to the Daleks. Right, they still still doesn't know much about the Daleks, how they how they survive the city, what's going on. There's still you know a lot of unknowns with each other. However, at the end of the season, it, uh, when Ver Verity Lambert's gone, it's changed into a much more superhero esque. Uh, uh, landscape, much more comic book esque landscape, where um, uh, the uh, uh, you know the Daleks and the Doctor know everything about each other, and they've been enemies since the dawn of time. Right? It's really really interesting to see that switch. Right? Um, so yeah, I I'm sorry, mate. Uh, uh, you're right for the first eighteen months, and then they changed that specifically into this more superhero type version of the Doctor. He was the pastiche of an old Victorian hero. Uh, uh, Patri uh, patrician with uh, an air authority designed to reassure the audience that he would sort things out and make everything all right in the end. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with uh, uh, patriarchal authority? I think you are ashamed of it because you've been brainwashed into that because you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah, you're an idiot. Uh, uh, this is the same guy who wrote the other article I was talking to you about. Um, d -d 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 depending on who was writing the scripts at the time, he was usually a hapless and vulnerable as everybody else with only plot armor protecting him. He was the title character in the hero. Again, go watch season two, mate. The um, uh, title character hero. And so, of course, he uh, he wasn't going to die, but he often came close and survived by the skin of his teeth. Yeah, that's something that Doctor was great at. By the time the original show was cancelled in 89, the seventh Doctor was beginning to become more than just a cipher who showed up in his own adventure. Yeah, no, he was very uh, actively Machiavellian, right? I don't think we saw that. The only time we got close to that was when um, Tom Baker's Doctor was uh, uh, tasked to take out the Daleks in Genesis of the Daleks. Right, which I thought was kind of... And also, I think, the uh, um, Deadly Assassin as well. It was when Rusty Davis revived the show in 2005 in the post-Buffy era that... They, this is the second time I've seen this guy use that phrase. That the Doctor became more of a superhero, especially by... Uh, no, look at the McCoy e e years, right? The McCoy years go seamlessly. In fact, I would say the McCoy uh, incarnation has much more superpoweredness going on than the Eccleston one, right? Quite frankly... I mean, okay, the only superpower thing I remember Eccleston doing was walking, was closing his eyes and walking through that fan in End of the World, right? I don't remember anything else. Uh, uh, again, a few, a few very good, uh, 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 you know, heroic speeches, right? Uh, uh, but that's about it. So anyway, uh, especially by the time the Tenth Doctor, he had his TARDIS, his costume, his sonic screwdriver. He was a genius and alien. He was a hero who steps in to save the day. That's because uh, that became how Davis, Stephen Moffat, and Stephen and Chris uh, Chimnall presented that. No, not Whitaker. She was a doofus who didn't know what was going on. Right? Absolute moron. Yeah. No, that's that did not happen. Um, the Stephen Moffat Chim presented the Doctor. Uh, the one who takes charge and the one who actually works to figure out how to save the day and, of course, make speeches. Speeches are, are a thing for Superhero now. The BBC YouTube channel put together the uh, uh, three moments of the Doctor being uh, the Doctor this weekend. It's a slightly odd selection, but it kind of makes sense. I doubt if the BBC did it. First, you get the 10th Doctor big speech from uh, Davis wrote for him in the Christmas special Voyage of the Damned. When he uh, it became a rallying call for him, it was the Doctor 
uh, and the show fully embraced it. Okay, you know what they should have done? Uh, done the trailer for, what was it, se season three, right? Where they talk about uh, all these... Dis no, season... It was season three. It was the Martha one, right? Uh, talking about who the Doctor is. He's fired. Like, the great trailer. Really great trailer. Um... It was the Doctor and the show fully embracing its identity, at least after slowly teasing it for three series. Shortly that, uh, after that, Dave has killed off Kylie Minogue in the story, possibly the only death scene uh, she's ever played, and it was on Doctor Who on Christmas Day, no less. By the time Stephen Moffat got to work uh, uh, with Peter Capaldi as the, doc as the 12th Doctor, he gave him probably more speeches than any other Doctor got. He was so good at them, right? He was so good at them. Uh, uh, I think McCoy also was yeah, I mean, just look at the speech he had to the Dalek at the end of Remembrance of the Daleks. Freaking awesome. Uh, where are we up to? And here we got the Doctor got under uh, under Moffat. The Doctor under Moffat got a lot of break, uh, barnstorming speeches, and in uh, Cabal's first series, uh, he gets his first uh, he gets his first here in Flatline, where he found he finds a role as a protector and fighter of monsters. Yeah, that was good. That was all about him defining himself. Prisoner of the Jadoon, really? Really? I'm sorry. Everything that Jodie Whittaker did is garbage. It just is, and I'm sorry. She never convincingly uttered a line as a doctor. I, 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 if you like her, God bless you, but like, no. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't very good. It wasn't very good. Chris General didn't uh, give the 30th Doctor Jodie Whittaker a big speech yet because she can't do it. Instead, he gave uh, uh, gave it to the fugitive Doctor Joe Martin, a previously unknown, a new Doctor, a classic superhero crossover. Yeah, but it didn't make any sense because we, yeah, she's uh, how did she does she exist? Uh, two Doctors meeting for one. Uh, they're the, the, it's the classic superhero trope. I am the Doctor is a declaration on so many layers. Uh, it, uh, it 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 uh, layers of promise, intent, identity, uh, ambition, and heroism. Who chooses, uh, who chooses the theme of these Doctor Who compilations videos? How do they decide? Do they get bored? Yeah, listen, I just think they want to highlight... They want to legitimize Jodie, mate. I want to legitimize Jodie. But yeah, no, Doctor Who can do the superhero movie bit things. Funnily enough, when Doctor Who tried to do a superhero movie, it really fell flat in, flat in its face, the uh, return of Doctor Mysterio. It really generally did. But again... Those the scenes with Capaldi and this kid at the beginning they were beautiful. Capaldi with kids is real. I, I thought you know because I haven't seen it for ages. Somebody put out a clip of uh, the Forest of the Night, which was a piece of shit episode. I'm sorry, it just is made no made no sense and wasn't very really good. But there's a bit at the beginning where Capaldi meets the kid in the forest, right? And he goes in the title. He's so good with kids, right? He is. Freaking, his, his doctor comes alive with kids. Oh, man, it's so, it was great. So, uh, 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 <laughs> I'm going to say, can we have some more Capaldi, please? Russell, Russell, how about, like, you know, four-part Capaldi adventure every now and again? We, we would like that. And, and, and Peter, mate, Pete, if Russell comes knocking, uh, uh, can you say yes? Can you say yes? I know. I know you didn't like being booted. We didn't like it either, right? But let's come together, baby. Let's come together. Fine. That is the news of the day, right? I, I'm happy to wrap up. Is there anything else we can go over? Um, what, what else? So there was uh, the Bleeding Call talking about the Hooniverse again. Oh, and this is brought up one more time. UK MP involved in row over how female talk to influences boys. Well, that's what it's for, right? Oh, no, no, doing it. Here we go. Influences boys. That that's what it was for. It was it was to change you know cultural norms, right? That that's the function of it, right? Uh, uh, and he got his ass handed him for saying these uh, you know, unspeakable things out loud. Don't say unspeakable things out loud uh, uh, if you don't want your ass handed to you, which will happen quite regularly. Fine, that is the news of the day of oh, yesterday. Anyway, my name is Vila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah.